grace to you and peace and blessings from God the Father to every one of you here from so many places and some, from so many times in a long life. We're here to celebrate the life of Melissa, Jane, Dove, Paget. And of course, we welcome you to this beautiful place. If I said that already, it's okay to say it again. It couldn't be more beautiful. Thank you, John, for finding this in the first place. Later in the service, and you can see this in the order of service, there'll be a time for you to share your stories of Tris and memories that you have. But right now, John, my husband, John, this is not John. This is my brother, Jim. I'm Ann or Dovey. And my husband, John, will share. Uh, okay, thank you, Andrew. Um, will share a, a reading from scripture. And just to set the scene, it's interesting because we had the opportunity to go to the Holy Land and we were near the at the Sea of Galilee and near the place where the reading that John's going to read now actually happened. And many of you will know this story. It's one of the most familiar in the Bible. So I can picture a place, believe me, it's very much like this, with water and a huge, like a natural amphitheater. And people have walked for miles and miles and miles. We drove, all of us, right? They walked in sandals just to see Jesus. Okay, don't The parable of the feeding of the 5,000. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fishes. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled and they took up what was left 12 baskets full and those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children Matthew 14 verses 13 through 21 at this time Jesus had just gotten word that his cousin and one of his closest friends had just died. And he got into that boat to get away, to be by himself. But Jesus came back. He didn't stay in the boat. He came back when he heard that 5,000 people, and who knows? I mean, maybe it's 10,000, maybe it's 500. It doesn't matter. Many, many people came to hear him. So he denied himself and came to meet with the people. And the event that John read happened in some way at that time. And whatever you care to believe is what you should believe. A miracle, some people say. And yet, isn't that caring for other people and sharing what you have? Isn't that a miracle? Doesn't that happen? all the time if we look and participate. Tris Padgett cared and shared with others generously and often. She opened hearts by her gifts of love, creativity, her 
you won't, you're going to be surprised at this. Her unique sense of humor and love. She helped many find their way after difficult journeys and challenges. And the, and the world is better because of the way she lived her life. She was unforgettable as teacher, principal, swimming instructor, especially for those with special needs. She was an artist with paint, with wool. Some of you remember the Argyle socks, sewing machine and quilts. A high school, here's one you might not know. Tracy, you may not even know this. A high school drum majorette who twirled fire before we had ever heard of anybody doing it, of course. A lover of dogs who was seldom without one and devoted to family, Tris was a loyal friend and teacher, gifted in those, in guiding those who had lost their way and helping them find it. We are grateful for her gifts and her talents. Please join me in a prayer for Tris, which I will share with you, and then we'll follow that with the Lord's Prayer, please, using trespasses. We thank you, Lord, for Tris Paget, mother, sister, aunt, grandmother, great-grandmother, and friend to so many. We miss her deeply, but know that her course is straight and her new port is crowded with those who love her and will welcome her home. And now please join me. I need your help in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We now invite you into a time when you can share your stories and memories. And um, I invite any of you who would like to share that. If you think you can be, you probably would be better if you could come up, but if you would rather not, just maybe come to the front so everybody can hear you. Is there anyone who would like to share those thoughts and memories? It's always hard to be the first one. I know. Uncle Jim? Yeah, we, we're leaving him till the end. Well, let me start it off with somebody else. So go okay, go yeah, ahead. Please it. do. That's good timing. Thank you. I thought somebody stole me. I am Uncle Jim, Trissa's sister. Trissa's sister. Dovey's brother, Trissy's brother. I'm up here to let you know a little bit about Trist. A lot of you don't know. First of all, W mentioned her unique sense of humor. My, my father took a lot of the abuse because when he walked by her, the time she was 10 or 12 years old, she would goose him. It, it, it didn't matter where he, where he was, he walked by in the house and she'd give it to him and he'd smack her head. Everybody would crack up that was standing there. Then she went to work on me, uh, you know, about 13 or 14, and she was just that way. When you were around her, you left. That's where he gets it from. But, one other thing about her. I can't see the them. No, it's not that. I can't see. When I was about... No, no, no. You're at the wrong side. 
go back. Another thing that you could say, W is all prim and proper. Trissy was not. She wasn't anything but prim and proper. I'll give you, uh, after she was born, the mold was destroyed. However, she had some great points. At three years old, our mother had bought a case of raisins and put them in the closet next to the kitchen. She found them, sat in the closet, and ate the whole case of raisins. That had dire consequences. When I was about 10, just was about 12, I was getting my ass kicked three or four times a week by Boris and Danny Dronoff. I had told her about it. She's, keep in mind, she's two years older than I am. And they came after me. And Trish showed up. And we beat the hell out of both of them. And did a problem. Now, it gets a little better. When Trish was 14, I was about 12. And there was a graduation party for her at the uh, Ride Beach. It was time for payback. The boys in the class were throwing all the girls in Long Island Sound. They chased them up through the park and then dragged them down through the her across the gravel and I'm, I'm watching this down over the rocks I was watching that and then they pinned her on the sand and I'm about five feet above her above her you can only take that for so long so the quarterback of the football team was on top of her pinning her down and I jumped off the rocks I hit her in the back got up, we took two or three, two or three of mine. We thought this was going to have a bad <laughs> But two of our best friends stepped out from the crowd and were behind us. And tell me if I remember today, carry you out all the way. Tracy Drake or Tracy Martin and it says the following it's a consolation card about Tracy the people we love become a part of our life and who we are dear uncle Jim and Joyce and when they leave this world a part of them stays with us always with love and sympathy Part of, a part of uh, Aunt Tris will always be remembered. For sure, you were the best little brother to her. And the victim, I guess it says the victim, who got goosed the most by her. Because she loved you. And she liked to aggravate everybody, just like her son. And in addition to that, the stamp on this envelope that she sent is a picture of a goose.
I got one more story to tell you. About six or seven, five years ago, six years ago, it doesn't matter. Trissy had two dogs. And she was living in Bonavigia Beach, Florida. One of them passed away. And the other one, they fought at the same time, and they were the same age. And we knew that the other one was going to go before too long. So I called uh, Scott. I said, Scott, what do you think? Can I get her another dog? Because the other one's going to go. No, don't do it. Call Dovey. Don't do it. I didn't hear if I had my hearing aids on. <laughs> Never does. I went to go from Spring Hill, Florida, which is on the east coast to the west coast, east coast, west coast to the east coast. Met this dog person for a great dog in a gas station. And I drove up to Bonavigia Beach. It was a Sunday. I said, how am I going to get this dog in that house? So I had a cage. And I put the cage on the front walk, right in front of the front door. And I went around the corner of the house, and I peeked out from around the house. And I called her on the phone. And I said, did the FedEx get there yet? And she said, no, why? I said, well, I sent you a package. You better go outside and take a look. She goes outside, looks. She says, you son of a bitch, where are you? She was looking all around. And then we get out from the corner of the building. And that's the way my sister and I got along. And I loved her dearly, to say the least. We all did. Thank you, Debbie. Anyone else want to share? Delia has something to say? Okay, wonderful. Can you see? Can you see it? So, one my cousin sort of turned five years old. Um, after that, he turned in here to his house and he had so much fun. She was so loving. Probably only one or two people in the crowd know about Tris. Um, in 2008, I came home from Iraq. Uh, interesting, fun, uh, free tour of a, a terrible place, uh, paid for by Uncle Sam and, and you people. Um, and uh, not a great time. And uh, promptly after arriving back in Virginia, my father told me he had cancer. Uh, my father was a tough Marine aviator, a Vietnam vet, and subsequently passed away. Uh, the most terrible time of my life. Uh, my dad was my rock. And a guy had been through the same things that I had been through. And uh, there was one family that stood up. And there was one great lady who grabbed me by the ears and talked really nice to me and then told me, like a great Navy chief's wife, to get my act together. And uh, I have a great Navy chief's wife. And um, Tris, Tris and Scott and Kelly would call me uh, throughout the uh, last 
few months of my dad's life and, and, th- and many months thereafter and just talk to me. And I end up calling Tris. Uh, she's in my phone still. And uh, she uh, brought me and, in fact, my entire family out of the doldrums of grief and did that for a period of several years. And um, I've known Scott for over 20 years and Kelly over 20 years. I've only known Tris for about 10 years. And uh, she just did an incredible thing for my family. And um, I never asked her and, uh, and I always thanked her for it. So you should know that about your relative, your friend, your sister and your mother, your, grand, your grandmother. She did what was right. And that's all we can ask. So thank you, Scott. Thank you, Kelly and children. Thank you, Debbie. God bless Tris. And Hunter, you wanted to say something? everybody hear me? Yep. All right. Before I open this envelope, I got three stories. But I'm not going to bore you. <laughs> they should be good. So the first one uh, is a little known. But my grandma took me in when I was in college and I needed to do an internship. So the internship I chose was working for St. John's County Sheriff's Office as an unpaid intern. Which she thought was hilarious because I'd come in and she would have to teach me how to iron my clothes so I could go out and get them dirty. Um, About a month into the internship, she pulled me aside. It was at seven in the morning. I haven't had any coffee and I was up way too late playing video games. And she goes, why are you doing this internship? At the time I really wasn't 100% aware of the why. She goes, the reason you're doing this is to figure out what you want to do in life. She goes, you need direction. And that means you need to wake up earlier. So get up. (laughs) I realized later, and I actually found the purpose that I wanted to become a law enforcement officer through that internship. And although she was probably telling me to get out of bed at the time, I really took that to heart. So she helped me find my direction in life. Um, The next story I have came from a similar time. Um, (laughs) She had asked the neighbor to get me a surfboard. Because he had an old surfboard and I wanted to learn how to surf. And she didn't know the first thing about it. So she used to be a member at the Ponte Vedra Beach Club. And she used to show me the gate of where I could take my surfboard into to access the beach for free. I thought this was great, except for uh, the surfboard that she had acquired for me had a giant Confederate flag on it. And the access to the beach port that I had to go through had a nice, um, not so happy person of darker skin working there who found it very uncouth for me to be walking past with my giant surfboard with the confederate flag on it (laughs) so um she found that to be hilarious as well and then um the third thing was uh she came up to watch my daughter delia when i had to do a very unorthodox repair on the roof so I'm on the, on the top roof and she walks out with Delia and Delia's concerned because I'm on the roof and grandma says, he'll be fine. He does stupid stuff like this all the time. <laughs> so I love my grandma very much and she taught me a lot. The most important thing she had going for her was love and when she made up her mind, you couldn't tell her otherwise. It was wrong, or you were wrong. <laughs> there was no in-between. Um, so, with that with that note, uh, I have a 
Homer's Odyssey. It's a red deer. <laughs> Hello, my name is Hunter Paget, aka Dad's Mini Me, also known as his Skinny Me. <laughs> Working to change that. Uh, he asked me to read his thoughts and memories to family and friends. Speaking of nicknames, my mom, Tris, not Trish, always called me Grasshopper. I'm not sure why. Maybe it has to do with always prepare, just like in the ant and the grasshopper fable. We all knew my mom. She had a tough, hard external perception. In her professional careers as a swim instructor, teacher, and principal, she was known as the Velvet Hammer. But we, her family and friends, know her as the most loving and warm-hearted person in the family, and she truly demonstrated unconditional love. She was a fixer, trying to help and solve the world's problems, our problems, and sometimes she couldn't always fix what was broken, but she always tried. Her heart was always in the right place. Mom loved all things art, she loved painting, crochet, knitting, pottery, ceramics, and many other artsy venues that I cannot spell. <laughs> she loved Tangare gin, scotch, gardening, black-eyed Susans, walking on the beach, finding shark's teeth. Her favorite perfume was Chanel Number no. 5, and she loved her dogs. The majority of her dogs were Newfies, Wessies, and Sc Scottish Terriers because of her deep Scottish heritage. Tris loved history. She was a member of the DAR. She did years of research into our family tree, researching artifacts from the Morrissey and finding and confirming direct connections with the Mary Queen of Scots at tea with the Danish Queen in 2004. She shared how we were of Scottish royalty. Lori got me a DNA test a couple of years ago. Yep, it's confirmed. We are 97% British, 3% Jewish, muscle tough. <laughs> Mom passed two weeks ago. Her last words to me were, I love you. She heard me say them back to her before she went across the Rainbow Bridge. I have to think when she arrived on the other side, she was met by Lori, Bill, all her dogs, family and friends at the seventh tree. Boy, I bet that was a reunion to see them in heaven. Love you, Mom. Grasshopper. There are so many thank yous to say. Over. Oh, these are numbered. Good. First to Kelly, my rock for the past 35 plus years. You are my rock, unwavering, and you've always been there for our family. Unconditional love. The trend continues. I love you. To Hunter and Lori, both have made us very proud. Tris loved you very much, and your support and love has helped carry us through many tough times. Thank you to Harley, Greg, for supporting Hunter and Lori. You are amazing. A special thank you to our chipmunks, Delia, Sloan, Austin, Jameson, Amy, and Carrington. You are the special angels that give us great joy every day. Thank you to Nana. Your love and support has also been unwavering. The sweat is not cooperating. Thank you to Aunt Dubby and Uncle Johnny for your love and support. Many nights we called you for advice. We're always there with great advice. Thank you for today's readings and prayers. They were extraordinary. He's very confident. He said this in advance. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. 
Thank you to Uncle Jim for your many trips from Tampa to Ponte Vedra to check on your sister. If it was not for you, we all would not be here. Thank you to Chef Michelle for last night's dinner and John Dove for always helping out and carrying the heavy loads. Over. Thank you to Lori for your help in writing these comments this morning on the porch. I'm so proud of you and it was a big help. Thank you for helping close this chapter. Thank you to Hunter Paget, my favorite. Just kidding, that last part I added. For reading this, you did a great job. You always do a great job. I love you. Lastly, thank you to all of our family and friends that traveled so, from so far to be here. Special prayers to baby Gabrielle, Terry, and Jason for being here in spirit. Get better soon. We now invite all family and friends to join us in scattering mom's ashes in the bay slash ocean. That was her final wish, so her ashes could eventually float to the shores of Scotland. Love, your son, Grasshopper. was a reference to the Morrissey. Those of you who don't aren't familiar with that, there's an Arctic exploring heritage of members of our family. The Morrissey was a ship that was on many of those expeditions. The blessing I'm going to read to conclude this part is by John O'Donohue, and it is a blessing for the new year. You have it on the back of your program because the first words are on the day when you stumble I'm compressing it here and I may stumble in reading this so read it with me as I try to read this blessing for Tris for her new year on the day when the weight deadens on your shoulders and you stumble may the clay dance to balance you and when your eyes freeze behind the gray window and the ghost of loss gets into you, may a flock of colors, indigo, red, green, and azure blue, come to awaken in you a meadow of delight. When the canvas frays in the crack of thought and a stain of ocean and natural object blackens beneath you may there come across the waters a path of yellow moonlight to bring you safely home may the nourishment of earth be with be yours may the clarity of light be yours may the fluency of the ocean be yours may the protection of the ancestors be yours and so may a slow wind work these ways of love around you, an invisible cloak to mind your life. 
blessings, Tris. Okay, Scotty, it's yours.